Hey there, Sonic Peace. How's it going? Henry here. Today, I'm going to go over the karate protocol, how I do it. Now, I have a video on my channel that uh, goes over the karate protocol and, you know, all the parameters and all that. But I'm going to show you from beginning to end how I do it. So beginning with the 9L, so the 9 linear, with the, the notch to the patient's right. I used to do the exam, um, transverse, sagittal, transverse, sagittal. But now, I've kind of changed it up over the years. I do it now, all my transverse images. And once I'm done with all my transverse uh, B mode images, I start to do my sagittal, grayscale, color, and spectral Doppler. So beginning with the right carotid, so right CCA proximal. All right, take a picture there. Make sure it's nice and clean. Use your TGCs to take out any of those echoes. Right there. Take that image. Go mid. distal so this is right before the bifurcation okay then once, once I'm done with distal I'll do the the bulb correction the bulb is right before the the bifurcation distal is right before the bulb okay so you can have your patient turn their head to the opposite side so there's a bifurcation Right below that is the bulb, and then bifurcation. Okay, now on each of those images, you can put color Doppler as well. You can take your grayscale image and then your color Doppler image. All right, for the sake of this tutorial, we'll just go right to the sagittal images. So you go back to right CCA proximal and sagittal. All right, so use your TGCs to clear up those echoes. Tilt the transducer a little bit. All right, take that. Then color Doppler. Take that, and then spectral Doppler, or pulse wave Doppler. Make sure your, your sample gate is not too big. Put it in the center of the lumen of the vessel. My waveform is kind of small. I want to increase the scale to make the waveform a little bit more clear. Lower the baseline a little bit and increase the sweep speed to five. Measure peak and end isotonic velocities. All right, and then do that again at mid and distal or just distal. You got distal, grayscale, color Doppler, or spectral Doppler. Right. Peak and end diastolic velocity. I have the auto measurements enabled, but you can edit those if it's not measuring correctly. All right, then do the bulb. So take a picture of the bulb now. In some people, you can get the, the bifurcation real nice. And you, you're not going to be able to get it on every single patient. But for me, the way to get it, I never can get a good one on mine. Before. So I try to angle this way. So now, in fact, the way to get it on mine is to go anterior and then angle towards the back and there's the, the bifurcation there it's not the most prettiest bifurcation but it'll do put some color up there now in the bulb you're gonna have a little bit of turbulent flow so that's why it's the most common place for plaque to develop also you're gonna have some aliasing from the turbulent flow so i just take a color doppler image there and then move on to the the ICA and ECA. I don't take spectral uh, measurements at the bulb. Where you work, you might have to. All right, then ICA proximal. So always remember towards the face, you know, is the ECA away from the face is the ICA. That's one way to remember it. Also, you just look at it. The ICA has no proximal branches that you can see on ultrasound. All right, and it's usually a little bit more bigger in caliber than the ECA, not always. All right, so take your grayscale image there. Color Doppler. All right, and then spectral Doppler, proximal. All right, measure peak systolic and end diastolic velocity. You can see a nice spectral window there. You'll notice that the waveform the ICA is low resistance so you're gonna have a lot of diastolic flow when you do the eca it's gonna be high resistance it's gonna have 
it can have reverse diastolic flow or very little diastolic flow. So I do that, I see a proximal, then do a mid. So that's mid, grayscale, color Doppler, right, peaking in diastolic velocity, and then again in distal. Now some places might only make you do proximal and distal, other places make you do proximal, mid, and distal. You have to, you know, learn depending on where you go, but it's good to have this protocol and then you can adjust it to wherever you go. All right, then I see a distal. So I'm over here, kind of deep into the, into the angle of my jaw. All right, there you can see the vessel still pretty clear. The deeper it is there, the more attenuation of sound you're gonna have. So you're gonna have to play around with the scale and the gain to make that vessel fill up in color. So distal grayscale, color, decrease the scale, bring it down. You're gonna get more aliasing and artifacts, but you gotta do what you gotta do. All right, color dobber and then spectral. All right, you're done with your ICA, then move on to the ECA or external carotid artery. So remember, away from the face, ICA, towards the face is the ECA. There you can see a smaller caliber vessel. As you can see some branches. There you can see, right there you can see a branch. Put the color doubler. I can see it has a little bit of reversal diastolic flow and then it goes right back. But totally different waveform to the ICA, high resistance. Take that. And only take one of the ECA and then go to the vertebral. And after the vertebral, you're pretty much done. So then go back to your common carotid artery around the midsection, about right there, okay? Then angle laterally, carotid, angle laterally. There you can see the vertebrae. And so there you take a picture there. And then put some color doper. The retriever artery can have a waveform that's uh, kind of a mixture between ICA and ECA. And that's pretty much it. Repeat this, uh, the same thing on the left side. And you have your carotid protocol. I hope you guys uh, found this useful. Thank you and uh, stay tuned for more. Bye.